Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Ricky Patterson The Secret 2. I am joined by reality royalty, Sloan Square Stud. It's none other than Sam Prince, everybody. Woo! Sam, Hello. how are you, Petal? I'm good. I'm good. New hair. Going through a little rebrand, looking after myself. Yeah, single. <laughs> I love that. New, new hair, who dis? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Bless you, Petal. So when you popped on, for everyone who's not watching this on a visual platform, Sam has opted for the old Jamie Lang. He's gone beach blonde. You look yeah. well, though. Thank you. Just been away for a couple of weeks to uh, Mallorca. Mallorca. I keep saying it wrong. It's in Mallorca, Menorca, Mallorca. No, they're two different places, babe. Two different so places. Ma- it's, I believe they're the Balearic Islands. So you've got Mallorca, Menorca, and Ibiza. Correct. And you've yeah. been Mallorca. That's the one. Home of uh, Magaluf, although I bet you didn't go there. We actually did. Fuck off! Yeah, Tell me where you went! Our villa, our villa was near the strip. It was actually, to be fair, it was more kind of, it, it's not really my scene. It's, it's very much uh interesting place. <laughs> I think that's a really diplomatic way of putting it. Yeah, really interesting. It's, um, cool. Um, yeah, very eye-opening. <laughs> so I um, worked in Magaluf for two years when I was younger. I did my first season when I was about 17 um, and then I went back a year later and tried to recreate it at 18 and it wasn't the same yeah I bet people do what we say though don't they? like you can't do stuff twice you can't recreate it like it, and it, it did feel like that my first year had very special memories yeah I bet I bet not I memories don't... that I would like but I'm sure they're great <laughs> I wonder what, um, right, okay, is any of the still same bars and nightclubs still there that I used to go to? So what did, did you go to any of the I didn't, ones? I didn't, I didn't go into the bar. It's more driving through and just open the window just to see, see what it was like. I didn't so actually like. You went as like a voyeur. Yeah, I went just to, just to see what the chat was all about. <laughs> oh, Sam, bless you. We're from two very different worlds. <laughs> <laughs> so how was the series, Pet? I was a late bloomer, so I came out three weeks. I was only out of three weeks. So there were people that were out there for six weeks. Um, yeah, it was a different experience for me. I can't really talk much about it because it's not out and it's uh, not on television currently. But for me, it was, I went there to cause chaos. And I think to... that, that, is, that is your brand, though, based on mm. what I've been watching of this series mm. that's on the telly at the minute. You love a fucking bit of trouble, you, son. I, uh, I just enjoy it. I'm, I'm 25. I'm here to just have fun. I think people take... I think that people, a lot of people on the show for the brand deals. For me, I just, I just want to have a good time. Now, I think that's really interesting. Like me and me producer were literally just talking before you came on and we're reading out our questions and I was like, oh, he is honestly <laughs> such a troublemaker. And she was like, yeah, yeah. And I said, but you know, he's 25. Like, I just don't know like if lads are ready to settle down at 25 or if they are. And I might be wrong here and casting like casting mm. aspersions, but if they're all just like having fun and thinking with their dicks a bit. Yeah. I think so, maybe. I think I've done that for the last 25 years for sure. But I think 25 for me has been like a turning point. Okay. I think I actually feel older now. I felt okay. like 24 and below, I thought I could get away with anything. I could do whatever I wanted. Yeah. But now I've hit 25, I've got more responsibilities now. Things, the tables are turning a little bit for me. Well, you've got to keep up with your roots for start as son. So that's quite a big responsibility. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is, by the way, no one told me when you get, when you grow up, when you get hair done, I didn't realise you have to, like, it's a constant battle to keep it the same colour. Oh, maintenance is an, abs- it's an absolute punch yeah. in the dick, Sam. So I'm, like, classically brunette. I think naturally, even though it's been a long time since I was natural in any sense, I am about, I'm probably like a mousy blondie brown. Yeah. Um, but I went blonde last year for a, a campaign with Fudge. They got the colour perfect. Like, I was very, mm. like, I wasn't quite as blonde as you, but I was, like, you know what you want is ashy you want cool tones so yeah you don't want those brassy notes and honestly they did it amazing but then like trying to keep it that way is a bit of a bit ag what i'd recommend is purple shampoo yeah I've got, I've got i've got all i've got loads of them tried them all <laughs> loads of them and uh I, when i was away someone's like i got this olivia had this like purple thing you keep it in there for like 25 minutes like a leave-in conditioner yeah but then yeah. it went purple and yeah. i was there Stress is um. I, I like the blonde, but I think it. I don't know how long it's gonna last for. It's high maintenance, but if you are gonna have this like hot boy summer, I feel like the blonde is such a nice touch. I had a great time last year as a blonde. Yeah, yeah. Do they have more fun, Sam? I would say, to be honest, since being blonde, I actually haven't had that much fun. I've had less fun. 
for some reason when I, when I was bringing up that sounded so much fun now mm. blonde i and you watch on the show i've had like a, not a meltdown but i've definitely had a life has been very different how it was when i was but not as not as fun when you as when you were a brunette no yeah not as oh. fun i was pretty much more carefree yeah weird oh. Sam, it's just Sam Prince debunking myths right here, right now. Bless you, Petal. Well, you know, you can always go back, Brown. I think I will, for sure. Or you could try something different. I want to go pinky, I think, after this, before really? it goes completely dark, yeah. Like a little power puff, girl. That's the one. <laughs> That's a big thing. Babe, I did not invite you on here just to talk about your hair. Yeah, let's crack on now. <laughs> I'm really interested to find out how you started on Made in Chelsea. Obviously, it's one of the original reality tv shows i'm a huge fan um so if you're dead interested to find out how you got how you got found did you were you a fan of the show i uh, d- definitely watched the show back in the day like when i was super super young okay. i think uh well, you would have been jesus christ like i'm sort of god i've got about 10 years on you sam you know i'm yeah. 35 so if i think i was 22 when it first came out and i was loving it you must have been 12 yeah and i remember watching i remember watching it at school and, and in our in our like common room, everyone was used to talk about MIC because it was just like a bit of a vibe back then. Yeah. And then didn't watch it for so many years. And I was I was having dinner with my mother. <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Mm. And she um, and I received a message on uh, Facebook, and uh, basically, would you like to come for a meeting? And I was like, no, no I, I don't think. Um, it's for me and I left for a bit and they messed you again and then I was like actually fuck it I'll come for a meeting yeah. I think they found me I was dating a girl who uh, was in the press quite a bit at the time and I was packed with her outside nightclubs looking battered and um, I think they probably <laughs> always a good start <laughs> yeah looking so like disgusting um and then I went for a meeting and they said can you film in like two days I was like yeah and then so, so how old were you then then babe I was 18 that's Really, so the, what I'm about to say might be quite divisive, um, but I think that's actually very young to be on reality TV. I don't know if you agree. I totally agree. I think too young, almost right. Eighteen. I didn't know my left and right. Like I, didn't, no. I had no idea what was going on. I was just out, getting battered, and, and trying to navigate myself through life. And I just, it was way too young. I think. Um, I, I remember, like when obviously when we did Geordie Shaw and stuff. I'm going back a really long time as well, but. Like I was, and I know it sounds like nothing, 18 to 22, but I remember at 22, I'd been to uni. I'd done mm-hmm. those seasons in Magaluf that I was telling you about, you know, I'd even done a season in Ibiza. Like I thought I was super cosmopolitan. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd seen the world, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> but then I remember Holly coming in. Um, big congratulations to Holly, by the way. She just got married. Looked amazing. Um, and I remember thinking, God, you're so young. And like, I look back at the show Mm. and what she sort of went through and she's spoken really honestly about her time on there and like the difficulties and stuff. So I'm sure she won't, I'm not speaking out of turn, but like she had it really hard. Like she sort of had to grow up and develop that thick skin, like with everyone having these opinions of her. And I think that's a lot of pressure on someone so young. Yeah, I think so. To be honest, I had it pretty easy coming in the show. I went on with Jamie, which I think really helped. Um, yeah. I didn't hero. really, not my hero, but great guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he is, uh, and I think that probably helped a little bit. I think, I think as a girl coming onto a TV show, I think there's way more criticism. I yeah. think if a girl comes onto a show, I think other girls almost see as a threat a little bit. Um, oh, we can be really bitchy, you know, like I'm not going to act know. like I'm above it. Cause obviously I am now when I'm 35, like jealousy is a low vibe emotion. It's super ugly. I hate it. Haven't got it in my life. But when I was in my fucking early twenties and you felt insecure and you're on this TV show and you know, you're trying to navigate this super exciting, but very difficult new space. Like I was so jealous and so scared all the time. So yeah, I definitely think it's very hard for women. For sure. Oh, that's a good observation. But it's not easy for boys either. What was the public's reaction like to you? Or did you try not to I, concern yourself too much? To be honest, I was, wasn't was really involved in that many storylines because I was so young and everyone was so much older than me. I had like, I dated, I think I dated like a few people on the show. And I was just, I was just super young. Um, so I got love at that point. Slightly different now with the comments I get, but back then it was purely love, I think. Because I was just such a baby compared to everyone else. 
But I am really pleased in that respect that your first experience and first foray into the world of fame was really so charmed because it can be really difficult and different for some people. So no, I think I'm pleased you had a nice experience. But still, regardless of that, you took some time out, right? I left in I did the crazy trip and I was at that point I was just getting hammered. I think I was living my uni days whilst in the show and I was just constantly battered a lot. And I think <laughs> And I think that probably didn't help with filming, probably didn't help with anything, to be honest. So I'm I was just... sensing a bit of a theme here, Sam. You like to, you like to party? I like to party, but not as... <laughs> it's slowed down a bit now, but back then it was like, right, it was like four days a week, and I think, um, yeah. And I took, I think, three years. I'm not sure how, exactly how long, and kind of got my shit together. And now I have businesses and responsibilities, which is definitely put me in good stead for the future. COVID was a big help in that. So sorry, do, when you're saying that, do you mean like COVID forced you to stay in more, take stock of what's important, if, kind of grow up and reevaluate, right? If I'm honest, this is bad to say, but COVID was amazing. COVID was for loads me. Of, loads of people have said that and I get where you're coming from. It was so good because it allowed me not to go out, it allowed me to focus on what I'm truly passionate about. And mm -hmm. uh, in that time, I set up two businesses, which has um, hit me in good stead for the future. And it's uh, something I really enjoy doing. And without COVID, I would still probably be out every other night it's so hard, so hard to like break that cycle though like jesus christ you're completely preaching to the choir I, <laughs> everybody saw how i used to behave when i was 20 like even your age right now you know 25 yeah. geordie shaw was proper just in its swing so yeah. like i completely get it um it's nice that you know called because i think the pandemic and we're forced like isolations and stuff even though everybody complained and at the time we were just wanting my lives back there was some real lovely moments for me in Erkan like you live life so fast don't yeah. you and often you just forget about what's really important which is the people you love and yeah. like the things you care about and stuff so no I completely get it I completely get it there's this definitely for me that lockdown like nostalgia where like I had yeah. to wake up every day and I was like, actually I actually don't have to do fuck up this is great um what was uh, the worst habit you got into in lockdown though because i but i gained two stone mate did you? i gained two stone i ate like non-stop because i felt like it was the only bit of excitement like shall we get a takeaway and i was yeah, like yeah. yeah fuck it let's do it so that was it and then of course you were we were drinking a lot more actually than yeah. we normally did because I still feel quite bad with me hangovers. You've got all this to come, mate. Wait till you get your face. It's such a punch in the dick. I haven't had one hangover yet. So no. I it's like, I'm oh. 25 years. I think the day I have a hangover, the day I'll probably stop drinking. But uh, right now, I just need to carry on. It depends on your pain threshold, Petal, because I'm, <laughs> I'm a total fanny. The slightest inconvenience or headache or anything, I'm like, I'm done. Um, so yeah, so we we did. We drank and ate more and I gained loads of weight. So go on, what bad habits did you have in lockdown? Was Oh, was it all uh, just green juices and starting was, new business? It was pretty. It's pretty healthy, but I, I did have occasional. It was a beer, not every night, but just loved the beer. I felt like I was fucking retired. I felt like <laughs> I retired, and I just had to wait for the, the, the food shop every week. I had yeah. to walk the dog. So for me, it was like I felt like it was a bizarre experience, but great. Take me back, twenty twenty. What a what a treat that was. <laughs> oh, but it's nice though that well, look. I think we have. I mean, it's nice that we're looking back fondly, but I do think we have a tendency to romanticize things. Yeah. And I do, like, you know, and I like it. I think it's our brain protecting us from potentially some of the horrible things that have happened. But I remember crying. I remember crying really? a lot. I Are you cry? Um, I'll like um, I think everyone on this podcast has seen me cry about a thousand <laughs> times like anyone sees anything remotely emotional about their lives or journeys and I will cry I'm what you call it HSP a highly sensitive person that's it yeah so honestly me fella guns mentally just like looks over it as on the sofa and he's like what is it now and I'm like there's an old man on the telly <laughs> um you know I cried a lot and like I miss family and I miss friends I'm from the north aren't I I'm mm. based down here so that was tough but um no it is lovely that we've taken nice things from what was a difficult time and yeah for like. sure for sure so you are now back on Made in Chelsea after your break and after lockdown and I want to say better than ever Sam like I feel like the role you're playing on the suits I'm watching at the moment is pretty integral yeah it's the thing is it's not that I'm playing like looking to play a role for me it's like I'm just having fun and I'm, I think I occasionally do hurt people but for me I'm, I'm just having a good time and I'm not really thinking I'm, it's just me enjoying myself and 
not thinking about much. And I think, um, I don't really want to think about much. I just want to just have a good time. Um, I'm not here to play a character. I probably play out certain things, but I'm just here to enjoy myself. I get, like, so from what I've seen, like, mm. I definitely feel as though you are a big character on the show, not to suggest like you're playing a part or anything. I just mean yeah. you've got a big part, you know? Um, but it, d- it does seem to me that you think with your penis rather than your brain most of the time. And I'm not having a go, you're only young. But do you think that's fair? It's totally fair. I think I, I think uh, I want everyone. I think it's I think it's like <laughs> it's like I have something so great, but I think my young mind sometimes I think like, oh actually I could hang out with her as well. And it's like um, I've definitely learned my lesson after last season for sure. I think uh, yeah. Because right, as a woman, mm. it, I find it, that's really annoying. But sitting across from you right now, talking to you, you're incredibly charming. It's disarming. But then like, you have all got that in common. I'm not lumping you all together, but like I could, uh, we've had Alex Smith on, you know, and I've sat there and I thought you were a real bastard to bink you. So I'm going to be, because uh, I love binks and I think, oh, I'm going to be mad. And then like five minutes into the conversation, I'm like, aren't you? Yeah, he's super charming. Yeah, and so are you, and so is Spencer, so is Jamie. So do you kind of think that that, even though you're all different and you're all, you know, got your own characters and your, your own personalities, do you think that's why the Chelsea lads get away with so much? Because these are just so charming. To be honest, I don't really get away with much. I feel like I'm constantly getting myself in fucking trouble. I actually get away with nothing. And uh, ah. like I, I feel like I get away with stuff and suddenly actually nothing. Gets, so I... I think occasionally I've got away with stuff, um, especially my last relationship, but uh, yeah, I definitely get called out all the time. So annoying. Uh, no, you unfortunately don't get away with anything. No. Especially. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you, Petal. Tell me a little bit about these exciting new businesses of yours. So I have a tea company called Forager Health uh-huh. um, that started in this first UK lockdown. And um, yeah, we, it's, it's basically tea focusing on health benefits. Um, it started as like a passion product, but now we have like five members of staff and a hundred retailers across the UK, 60 in the US. And uh, it's now something that's taken over my life and I'm super lucky to be involved with, with it and um, super happy. Uh, so that is really exciting. So tell me, so it's tea bags, right? Tea bags, yeah. I'll send you Thank you, Bees. That's really kind. Honestly, I love me little coffee tea. And I say, so is it fancy teas? Is it fruity teas? It's uh, it's a mixture. There's um, it's mainly focused on health benefits. There's like immune system, energy and focus, sleep, um, and just making sure people understand that if you have a cup of tea, there's also an immense amount of health benefits, and uh, that's what I we focus on mainly. So you weren't kidding about lockdown, were you? You really have. And get this, I'm so excited about what I'm about to say. You've turned over a new leaf. Right, that's it. <laughs> I was really proud of myself for that one. Oh, babe, well, that's really good. And I think, like, I think having passion and having purpose in life is really important. You, honestly, again, I'm about to compare you, but I feel like I remember when Jamie launched Candy Kittens, yeah. and everyone was like, I remember being a bit scorned for like popping sweets. Come on, mate. Like, yeah, grow up. Yeah. yeah. Now my cupboard constantly candy kittens. Yeah. I can't wait to the day where I'm like, yeah, I've got Sam Prince's tea in. <laughs> Can't wait, babe. But before I let you go, because we're about to finish part one, yeah. I wanted to play a little game with you. Gotcha. Let's go. Right. Okay. This one is a bit tongue in cheek. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm wondering if the lads and lasses from Mid and Chelsea are mm-hmm. in touch with reality at all, or if you guys are really just living your high class bougie lifestyles. Okay. So right, I'm going right, right. to ask you some questions that normal people should know. Yeah. Okay. What is the average price of a pint of milk, Sam? Uh, Stop, <laughs> because I don't really drink milk. I think it must be like two pounds, two pounds fifty. Okay. Um, it's about seventy pence. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you sell tea bags, son. Come on. <laughs> it's mainly herbal tea, but yeah. Okay, I'll let you off. That's quite a good value. Well, do you know what? Right, I do my shop on mass. Like I buy yeah. everything, um, yeah, yeah. and I was really, I was pleasantly surprised that that was so low, especially with inflation and everything. So yeah. listen, you're not the only one who was off on that. I was definitely. Off. I'm more of an almond milk guy, you know. It's almond, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Almond, almond. Milk, delicious. Yeah, yeah, it's quite trendy, you know. 
you're doing nothing for your posh boy image here, by the way. I'll just let you know. Next <laughs> question. It. How much is a, your average flight to Parma? Home of Magalhães. Oh, I nearly came home early, so I tried to book on myself. I think it was like, uh, I think I think they were super, I think it's like 35 pounds. Okay, so the one we found, but then it might have been different, but the one we found was 135 quid. Maybe it was 130. Maybe I've got the one. Yeah, Maybe it was like, 130. Do you know what, Maybe Sam? that's it. I'm going to give you half a pint. Yes. I'm feeling generous today. <laughs> right, next one. And yeah. I will be fucking surprised if you get this, mate. Price of a standard Toby Carfrey. That's what the mass. Clue? It's mass. Clue? Clue, right? uh, no. No, you're just going to go for it. Go on. Wait, so the stand, to, standard. Standard. So you want meat, your veg, your gravy. Does it come with a pint or just, just the? It's just the Carfrey. I, I'm going to go low. I think it's like £5.50. You're not far off, babe. It's, and this is a weekend price as well. It's actually right. cheaper through the week, but it's £7.49. Nice. So I'm, again, you're getting half a pint for that because you are quite close. And I feel like that's, that's probably nice. the weekday price and I didn't specify. So there you go. The next one, which I think you've got the most chance of getting right, mm-hmm. is how much does a bottle of Echo Falls cost on average? Yeah, it's delicious stuff, that. Um, <laughs> what is that? It's this headache in a, in a bottle. Um, <laughs> what is that? That must be, I'm going to say, like £4.50. Oh, my God, you're so getting a point. So it comes from £4.50 to five ninety nine, depending on what shop you go to. That is a full point. Delicious. Full point. So you actually got two out of four. You're, Take it. I feel like that's kind of out of, better than I was expecting. Love that. I like these games. It's great. I like it. We come back in uh, part two and I promise there's another game. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to part two of Vicky Patterson, The Secret Two. This week, I am joined by Made in Chelsea's Sam Prince. How are you, babe? All good. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you again as well. I thought you did pretty well in that quiz in part one. Yeah, I enjoy quizzes. I enjoy games. Oh, I can tell. Yeah, love that. <laughs> so, in the last series of Maiden Chelsea, we saw you have a little bit of murder between Inga, Liv, and I know you can't tell us too much, but I'm wondering if it's all sorted now. It's uh, me currently, yeah, last season was a bit of a mess. What it a was, mess. It was a bit of a mess, babe. I've been watching it, and obviously I watched it, and I was just a bit like, Oh, fuck me. Yeah. It's poor lads just making things worse for himself, isn't yeah. he? Because I, as much as me and Inge, we had this relationship which is so beautiful. And to be honest, if I'm, if I'm totally honest, I, I'm still 100% in love with Inge. Oh. Inge is, uh, I made a terrible mistake that season at the fact that I just got so lost. And I think things were working out, but I didn't know how to sort it. And I was constantly trying to make it better in that moment and not spending time for myself. Um, and yeah, I made a terrible mistake I got with Lear, which was... I've known she's been one of my best mates for years. It was very much a friendly kiss. But it's been misconstrued that we were like full on canoodling. And then Verity has always been, um, for some reason, been a distraction, um, which is a huge mistake. She was really fit. No comment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're learning because that was very clever. <laughs> Um, she's the, like, yeah. You would have kind of gone to the same school for that sort of thing because you yeah. did the same thing now as well. No comment. <laughs> yeah, right. Me and Brady are actually very similar. We're both this uh, like getting in trouble, I think, sometimes. Um, but yeah, no more of that. It's so hard, Sam, because I want to ask you, right? Like, obviously, we're watching this play out and I'm talking to you about it as if it's gossip, but it's your life. That's one thing that people, I, th- I think people watch it and think, God, this is great. And then, but, and I think I watch it, I, I don't watch them all but sometimes I watch it and for me in my life sometimes that is really tragic and actually quite hard it's, and people watch yeah, so like really hard and like, watching it back as well and you're like this actually really affected me and you watch back it just seems like it's like three seconds or like three minutes you don't really think much of it but uh, there were aspects of last season for sure which um, hit hard I think like what I sometimes forget and it's really bad that even I forget because my background is completely reality TV like fucking mm. hell you I think Made in Chelsea might be the only one I haven't actually done <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't for one to try and um but no I think it's it's easy to forget that actually it's someone's life you're watching mm. um and I like loads of loads of my like difficult 
big life moments were played out on Geordie Shore. Like I got engaged. That was a real fucking mistake. By the way. I, I must say, I am. I used to be a big Geordie Shore fan. Did you be? What? Yeah, I well, to... I suppose they're probably around the right age, right? Yeah. When I was younger, I just found it so fascinating. I was like, wow. Was it a little bit like watching National Geographic for you? Yeah, I, I think also I really enjoyed the <laughs> Gaz. A different tribe. The Gaz and Scotty bromance I really enjoyed. Just like, that just doesn't, so doesn't out, of this, out of this world. <laughs> um, but yeah, back in the day, great show. Bless you. But yeah, I think loads of my really tempestuous relationship moments, quite heart, heartbreaking moments, you know, were played out on TV for people's enjoyment. And nobody really takes for people watching it who are enjoying it I don't think there's much of a a second thought about you know what the person is going through it's more just like consumed for entertainment so I do think that must be really hard for you especially because what's the turnover like on MIC is it very fast does it happen to you on say like a Wednesday and it goes out two weeks later or is there a bit of a delay I think I think I'm not I couldn't tell you exactly the delay but it feels pretty fresh from sometimes when I watch it I try not to watch it I feel like I just why do I want to watch my life back let's move forward so I try not to watch it as much as possible but um there's scenes I have watched and I was like god that doesn't look too bad but I know how I felt in that moment um but yeah I never watched Shorty Show I never really? watched it yeah never watched one episode I watched one we got made to watch the like first ever like when we all went in we all got together and watched it in a casino I think some sort of like screaming high end yeah, yeah oh yeah it was brilliant it's the height of sophistication um so we I didn't um watch any more and then recently I made a documentary about alcoholism with um with me dad and nice. I was forced to watch some of my scenes back and it was fucking painful really uh, painful uh, like i'm i never really like th- that behavior on that show i it never made me proud you know like instantly the next year i'd do it and hate myself but try adding 10 years to that and being the person i am now and it was honestly heartbreaking watching the way i went the way uh, i went on do you think in 10 years time you will watch back through like your hands <laughs> or do you think you'll just be like oh i'm a different person now i've grown I think I'm growing all the time. I think I, I'm definitely trying to learn from my mistakes. But I think I don't think I'll look back with regrets. I think I'm young, having a good time, and just like I know I've hurt a few people, but I'm just having a good time. And um, I think that's what's being young about. Is I think it's about making mistakes. Probably the right attitude to have. I think it will definitely leave you being far less tortured because I'm from the complete opposite school where I beat myself up over absolutely everything. And let yeah. me just tell you, that is not good for sleeping at night. <laughs> what's the best best thing that has come from you being on reality tv and what's probably the worst uh best thing that's come from i think i've made some really good friends i think recently i think that's a nice answer yeah i think i've met some people that i kind of met on the show who are generally really good mates and i really get on with who's your best friend very close with Liv. i think Liv has always kind of been there for me Liv is even when i was away from the show i could not speak to Liv for like a year and then I'll be going through a breakup. She's just like, hey, let's hang out. Like, she's very caring and loving. She's like a big sister almost that I happen to kiss occasionally. But um, Very infectious. <laughs> no, but like, she's, um, <laughs> she's great. Okay. And what's the worst, probably? Worst is... What the worst? There's nothing really I could say that's that. Maybe sometimes it seems quite emotional. People don't understand how emotional it was. But um, that's kind of it, really. I wouldn't say there's that many negatives. Are you, a bit anyway. more, are you a bit more sensitive than people think? I recently I have been before like I, I get I get like quite a lot of hate I think of the last couple of seasons but I quite enjoy the hate I quite enjoy that someone's there in their living room giving me hate I, I thrive off it I almost want it more but I think recently since this breakup with Inga I think I've definitely been a little more sensitive for sure I think I never appreciated how I felt about her. Um, do you think there's any hope for you two getting back together? Right now no I mean if she listens to this I'd love her to to fucking unblock me um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but she's yeah I love her I love her so much um, but I think Sam you know, where do you live I was under the impression you were really rich and posh and all I can hear is fucking sirens huh I live East London oh shit mate yeah. you're, so you're cool I'm not cool but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know maybe <laughs> I like living in I lived in West London for like five years. Now I've moved to East London. And uh, yeah, now I've got white hair and 
tattoos and shit. Fuck me, I'm edgy. You <laughs> are honestly so edgy. So edgy. Uh, so hang on, Inga, if you are listening to this, and I, I would love to think Inga is a fan of it, you better than the secret too, then please unbox Sam. He's very sorry. Yeah. You very uh, sorry? Yeah, yeah. Inga, I love you. Oh, you're, you're so sneaky cute. Like you are a real handful. Right, go on then. Last, last little question about last about the last series because yeah, I promise I won't move on. No, 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 I quite enjoy it. Let's go. Do you? It's like right. therapy. We can do this once a week, this would be great. <laughs> Cathartic. Now, I know me, Eva, and James's relationship was a huge storyline. And yeah. I know it's, I, I know her, she is like a person is incredibly divisive. Like, I think she's absolutely fucking she's gold. Amazing. Me. It's the Mavis show, by the way. Um, but do you regret getting involved in that? Absolutely not. Absolutely no. Not. No. I you don't give a fuck, Sam Prince. I am. Um, I actually don't <laughs> give a shit. But I think uh, I enjoy. For me, it was. I actually believe I. I didn't at that time moment in time. I didn't think he should get engaged. I, I didn't think that. I think she was pressing him too hard at some points. Um, and also, I didn't know Maver, but she'd always given me the heart. Like she would always scowl at me almost when I saw her, and almost saw me as how I me think and that's Jane. That's her face. For sure, I just, you. I was not scared of her, but a little scared of her. And I, I remember walking into that restaurant, having that scene with her, and it always semi enjoyed one year off. I found it quite Moorish because she used to get so angry. I don't know, passionate, isn't she? So passionate. But I've actually had the pleasure to getting to know Maeve more since being away. And um, if we, Maeve is actually such a sweetheart, and uh, we can really get on as mates, and she's just so lovely. And their relationship is honestly seeing how they are with each other is just so special. I could not be ha more happy with the fact that getting having a baby and they're getting married, I think it's amazing. It's so lush, isn't it? Oh, well, congratulations to them. Can you give us any gossip at all for the summer series? Any goss? I cry. Oh, you're a little sensitive like me. I cry all the time. I love I that for you. Yeah, I, it's, I, I always say to myself, I'll never cry on camera. It's like I never didn't do, and then for some reason, oh, I, I, I thought, yeah, I just let it out, you know, it just happened. I have quite a serious question to ask you, and I feel like we've had quite a nice time throughout the podcast, like quite a nice laugh. So I'm, um, I'm hoping this isn't too triggering for you, but you were recently diagnosed with ADHD. Is that right? Yeah, can you tell? No, babes, not at all. Um, yeah, I was recently diagnosed. It's something that I think. I've had always since I was younger. Yeah. And uh, I, my ex-girlfriend Inga, she said, I walked into her flat for the first time and she was like, you have ADHD? I was like, what? Nothing's wrong with me, I'm perfect. What are you on about? <laughs> and, she, and she was like, I, I've got, I'm not scatty, but I always get distracted very easily. I could have a conversation with you, but also I'm interested in, I'm thinking a few steps ahead, like what am I doing later? Or, and it's always been something that has, I've never understood what it was. Um, it's never been a massive part of my life. I have it very minor. It doesn't affect me every day, but it's something that I sometimes have huge amounts of energy. And some days I feel like putting the kettle on is a, yeah. is a big task. So um, yeah, it goes in waves, but I, I, for me, it's keeping a really balanced life and looking after myself and uh, yeah. Do you think that's helping then, babe? Like, so when you are partying hard and like living life to excess, do you think that potentially exacerbated the ADHD and now you're in a place where you're living a lot more mindfully, you can control it better? I think so. I think when I'm like drinking loads and living in chaos, which I think I've lived in for years, I think uh, it probably is worse for sure. But it's um, I, I, the reason why I want to shed light of it and the reason why I it came out was because I have friends who are completely debilitated by this to the point where they find it hard to get out of bed in the morning and they they struggle in their relationships and they struggle in all all aspects of life and for me is i want to just shed a light on that and the fact that adhd is almost chucked in the carpet of something that's not too serious but for some people they can't really live a normal life there's levels right it's like yeah. anything i'm assuming okay. okay yeah and some people i i've seen people that they can't really hold a conversation at times they can't just live a normal life so for me it's uh yeah I want to shed a light on that you know that I mean very admirable I will not name any names but I've definitely come across people in the industry who I know like completely have it like they'll be chatting to you and I'll be halfway through an answer and they'll ask us something else 
Yeah, I, I mean, I do that sometimes. I like to sit down. I, um, <laughs> I was done. I mean, I mean, credit. I one thing is like incredibly impatient. Sometimes like, I'd be in the queue at prayer every morning. I just think, fucking hell, get me. To, like I get very impatient and interrupting people. That's another thing that happens for sure. It was really interesting, um, and I suppose if anybody's listening to this and is affected by any of these things, it could be ADHD, right? It could be. Mm. you know what mate listening to you speak there and hearing you say like oh it was Inga who told me like I am and I know you've treated her like a right bastard but even I'm like I really hope they get back together yeah yeah honestly <laughs> I do kind of hope you get back together but you you do have a real way with the ladies mate you've got some canny good celebrity exes we've got Lottie Moss we've got Toff Inga I know Liv probably wasn't a girlfriend but you do all right like, yeah. are you looking to be single right now or are you looking for love? I I think it's, for me is I enjoy being single. I enjoy meeting new people. I enjoy dating. I actually yeah. really enjoy the date process. It's, like, it's really exciting, isn't it? It's really like, exciting. It's like I used fucking, to love a date. Oh. Yeah, it's like a really weird interview. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a really sexy interview. Really sexy interview <laughs> where you can get to know someone. And I, for me, is I love meeting new people. So dating, I love. Also, I love it sounds weird but I do love being in love I love like having a partner and hang out every day and like having a best mate and yeah. building a relationship is so much fun um, I'm not very good at it but I know that it's um it's a good time you know what mate I know you get like a bit of a raw deal and I was half prepared to fault, co- no I was half prepared to come on this podcast and be like what a bastard but actually I really like you I, w- I wouldn't if you cheated on one of my friends, but you are you are really you are really charming and really nice. And I think what people have to remember is you're really bloody young. Like who hasn't done how who hasn't made a mistake when they've when they've yeah. been in young in a relationship. So the thing I struggle with is learning from them. Learning from mistakes yes. is something that I'm not too good at. But maybe we'll come with age, we'll see. Oh, it absolutely does. I mean, look at all the bloody mistakes I've made. <laughs> uh, what do I say? You can't be old and wise if you've never been young and daft. Correct. I totally agree with that. Live your, live your life, son. Right. I promised you another game. And before I let you go, we are giving you one more game. Cool. So I've be, been playing this with every Maiden Chelsea cast member who comes on. We've yeah. had Ollie Locke. We've had Ruby. Oh, I love Ruby. Ruby's great. <laughs> he is unbelievably beautiful. Um, okay. So I'm going to give you a name of a cast member and you're going to tell me the first thing that pops into your head. Okay. Love it. Let's get in trouble. This should be fast with your ADHD. Okay. okay yeah, yeah. Ver- Ver- <laughs> Verity. Trouble. Fair enough. Inga. Beautiful. Oh, you are so getting back together. <laughs> James. Um, great. So great. So great. Miles. Jim. <laughs> Mava. Um, Mava. How do I describe so many words for her? Um. I think powerful. It would powerful, be like just charismatic. Head. She's very powerful. powerful. She can control the fucking room, that girl. I feel like she could control the world. Which is, yeah. Gives me evil genius vibes sometimes. She's yeah. crazy. Sure. Um, and Liv, Liv Bentley. Uh, delightful. Oh, babe, you know what? They were all really, really nice. You don't deserve your bad guy rep. Um, here at Vicky Patterson, The Secret 2, before we let our gorgeous guests go, we always ask them to give our lovely listeners... A pool of wisdom, um, something that, something like advice that they've learned over the years. Um, and it's obvious after watching you on Made in Chelsea, after learning a little bit about you today, that you are a complete agent of chaos. Um, and I want to know what your secret is to causing chaos. Um, what's my secret to causing chaos? I think it is, I think I'm just incredibly selfish at times. I just think about myself. Um, I just don't, I, I think it's very sorry to say, but sometimes I just don't care and it's really bad, but I think I very much just do what I want when I want, which I think is, I wouldn't advise doing it. Get yourself in lots of sicky situations with lots of people or girls. Do you know what I've realised right at the end of the podcast, why you're so endearing, annoying, but endearing is you're on, refreshingly honest. Yeah. It's, it's rare. And, yeah. Um, it's our oh, Sam. You don't hold this against us. It is attractive, mate. Is very, it? Yeah, you're very attractive. I can see why you pull now. I can see why you do damage, son. <laughs> I can. You're a very honest, attractive man, right? Even yeah. even with your Jamie Lang hair. 
Oh, don't say that. Don't say that. I got. I. I. I they said. It, someone said to me that they just like you're. You're a collab between Jamie and Liv, and I was like, that is the pit. That is just not what I'm here for. Whoever said that to you, fucking tell them from me. Yeah. An absolute dream. Probably fucking bang on. It's so nice. <laughs> Babe, you've been such a pleasure to have on the podcast. I wish you the best of luck with everything. And um, even though I probably shouldn't, I will be rooting for you and Inga. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's been lovely to see you. You're so welcome.